Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover Warren 20 here, and I'm here with a brand new movie review. And this is going to be for the follow-up to the movie I reviewed yesterday. Yes, I think you can already tell what it is. It is, of course, for 2005's Rob Zombie's only masterpiece, to my eyes, The Devil's Rejects. Probably the only Rob Zombie movie I consider a masterpiece. And, uh... So, y'all know, I did, when I saw House of and Corpses, I thought it was just an okay movie, just more of a guilty pleasure, it was, it was like a fine film, it, it just kind of felt rushed, it kind of felt jumbled all over the place at times, the acting felt kind of, ah, at times, the characters weren't really memorable, however, and plus it felt a little too comedic at times, however, this movie pretty much ditches a lot of comedy elements. I mean, there's still some comedy here and there, but this movie actually ditches all that. In, in like, it is really, really damn graphic. In nature. In the first one, a lot of the really, really gory graphic stuff is just really implied in House of Thousand Corpses, and in Rejects, they just straight up show it. They don't cut away from anything. It's literally all shown. Which was definitely pretty nice. And, um, and plus the killers, um, now for the Firefly family, I didn't really like their designs and the, their cartoony designs in House, House and Corpses. That was another one of the big problems I had with that movie. However, I kind of like their much more human designs in this film. They look a little more realistic. They look more terrifying to be around this time, which was very nice. And, um, like, and then, like a lot of the, a lot of the whole dark scenes are actually really intense, and, um, there's, like, um, especially there's, here's probably my favorite moment of the movie, well, it's my second favorite mo moment of the movie, I can't really show my actual favorite of the movie because of, well, YouTube stuff, but I'll show you what my second favorite moment of the movie probably is, especially probably what my favorite quote of the movie is. Well, you know, first of all, I didn't say anything. And second of all, I'm calling the shots! Consider me fucking Willie fucking Wonka! This is my fucking chocolate factory! You got it my factory! Get it, Willie! So I just like the way he says... I just like the way he says, this is my chocolate factory. <laughs> this kind of like the way he told the <laughs> this kind of, It's actually kind of funny, considering that um, the Tim Burton remake of Charlie and Chocolate Factory came out around the same time this movie came out, so... It's pretty ironic. But, what is the movie about? Well, ambushed at their homestead, was it? homestead by Sheriff Waddell and a squad of armed men... A.K.A. Sheriff Waddell's the brother of George Waddell, one of the victims in House of the Corpses. The Firefly family awakens with gun blazing. Yet only Otis and his sister, Baby, escape unharmed, taking, a, taking refuge and hostages in a back road motel. The wanted siblings rendezvous with the deranged partner in crime, Catherine Spaulding, killing whoever stands in their way. But as the body count melts, Sheriff Waddell takes the law into his own hands, paving the way for one of the most depraved and terrifying showdowns in cinematic history. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. So. So, like, when House of Corpses came out, some called it a new style of horror, so others call it a sick movie that just deliberately ripped off Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, it definitely still felt like a very tired attempt at a movie in certain spots. In 2005, Devil's Rejects came out, the 70s style horror movie that is just there whether you like it or not. It's got some shaky camera work, fade out, fade ins, slow time, just everything that makes this film feel like excuse to test out one's movie making skills, and it does it well. This is probably a horror sequel unlike any other I've seen, and this is how, this how to me is what a horror sequel, you actually want to make a good horror sequel, or a better horror sequel, if your first film didn't work, should always be like. This takes the sadistic family from House on the Corpses and makes them the main focus of the movie 
in, in A Thousand Corpses, they were the film's antagonists. They're still kind of the antagonists of the story. Actually, I'm going to say this. There are no good guys in this movie. Pretty much everybody's an antagonist. Rob never... Rob actually said no one was... There wasn't supposed to be a clear protagonist of the film, and that's not what I did like. This time, it's about them running away from the police, not a story of the people they're killing. While it still can be a violent... While definitely extremely violent, disturbing to the point where some people often would turn their head away and really feel a little nauseous. Nauseous. I... There's times where it can be kind of a horror film, but personally, I don't really think it's a horror movie, and... I kind of find it more of a 70s... 70s movie in the veins of like Bonnie or Bonnie and Clyde or something and but it definitely but I definitely would still recommend watching House of Thousand Corpses first because because if you watch this and skip House of Thousand Corpses you'll get a little confused as to who these characters are you won't really have a connection to most of them and plus plus you probably plus even know if you like or you probably won't like it if you haven't seen Thousand Corpses first. Like, with Thousand Corpses, as much as more mixed feelings I have in that film, it gave us an amazing 70s style horror movie with killers that are very amusing and at point charismatic. Jealous rejects, like, jumps on the charisma of these characters to the point where I laughed when one put. This is a point where, where it even gets more horrific when, when one of the killers puts a man's face on to his girlfriend's face as a mask while Don's here because. Since, well, he would do that and. He did that, technically kind of skinned some guy wore guy's mask in the in House of Corpses, so. Like, so, yeah. The movie definitely has one of the best opening scenes in a, in a horror sequel ever. It starts off with 30 cops surrounding the whole Firefly house and threaten to open fire if they don't come peacefully come out. Of course they don't. And of course they don't peacefully come out. They decide to get guns and shoot, and they shoot down multiple cops and, and one family member is immediately killed in the shootout. So, Baby and Otis are left to run, are forced to run away, while Mother Firefly is arrested, and later killed, by the sheriff. And so the two remaining members are later, must regroup with Captain Spaulding, and... And so they take hostage of this, of these two, of these, like, of this traveling band and their two wives. As while they're waiting for Spaulding to show up as they're forced to take refuge at this hotel. This is like, um, this movie's definitely violent, gruesome, probably the most violent, gruesome movies of the 2000s, and if this were, like, made today, it would probably be just some stupid, toned-down bullcrap. It would, it would probably hardly have any violence at all. And if there was violence, it would be way too quick. And it does have its moments of nudity and language, like 224 F-words. But it's like all done to show you the minds of the Firefly family who are villains and and heroes and and you'll feel uncomfortable and some people will feel uncomfortable watching us and other times they'll feel it's a brilliant work of art which most should see and action starts with a the movie and never ends there's not a lot of time wasting conversation we are presented with evil in its purest form and just left just to observe I think my one flaw the movie has is that I kind of don't like how this movie tries to make us feel sympathy for a family of killers, really. Especially for ones, especially for a family of killers that rape, murder, mutilate, do all sorts of nasty stuff, nasty shit, too. Yeah, that's kind of my only flaw of the movie, but all in all, I think it's a very great horror sequel, and a few rare good horror sequels that's actually better than the first one, and here's how I would definitely rank the best some of the Firefly Family Trilogy. I am going to give The Devil's Rejects an 8 out of 10. Ah, and another good thing is that I'm glad they, the, and it was a great way to end the movie too. I mean, the Firefly family had a fish, like how the Firefly family, it ended with the whole Firefly family now really badly injured all immediately getting gunned down by the police in the roadblock, and that would be the good end to their legacy. Wait, what? No! They made a third! 
Oh, God. I forgot they made it. I forgot they just had to go make a third one. Fourteen years late. <sighs> well, that'll be the next review, I guess. But, anyway, that'll be it for this review. Thank you all for watching. And if you like this and want to see more, then don't forget to like and subscribe to Movie Lover 120.